In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a sliding door that operates with a proximity prompt. Obviously, the first thing that you need to do is open up Roblox Studio and make sure you have the properties and explore windows open by going to the view and clicking on explore and properties. After that, go to model and insert a part for our door. So you can resize this however you like, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then after that, I've created one door. I'm going to do control D, control two, and move this one right over. And then we have the two doors set up and then I'm going to actually copy and paste one again. I'll do control D actually, move it to the side. And then I'll do control three. And then I'll resize this, make it a little bit bigger on both sides then make it longer as well. We'll do control D, control two, move it to the other side, then control three, uh, or actually control D rather, control two, move it up, need to move the camera back and I'll create the top right here, control three, and then we have the top created. Just like that, we have the setup for a door. I'm gonna go ahead and change the parts colors though to make it stand out a little bit easier. I'll make the two doors transparent slightly as well. So, and then after that, I'm actually going to select all of these parts and anchor them. I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna select all these parts, go to the anchor property and select it. That way they don't move around at all. And now we can actually get to the creating the doors with the proximity prompt. I'm gonna actually group them together first, select them all and do control G to group them. I'm going to rename the model. I'll just rename it example sliding door. We're going to go to the parts and rename the different parts. I'll name this one our uh, right door, rather. Right door, got the left door, and then got the, let's see, top right here. And then I'm going to insert an attachment into the top, and I'll insert a proximity prompt into the attachment afterward. And that will be the location of our proximity prompt. I'm gonna do control two to move the attachment. I'm going to make it in the center of the two doors and then I'm going to go to the properties of the proximity prompt and select the requires line of sight property and set it equal to false. That way we can actually see our proximity prompt. Otherwise we would not be able to see it when the doors are closed because the proximity of the attachment rather would be inside of the doors. Next what we're gonna do is go to the model and insert a script and we can get scripting. We're going to get the tween service because we'll be using that to animate the door opening and closing. So go ahead and type local tween service equals game colon get service tween service. And then after that, we're going to get a reference to all the different parts in the model that we need to use. So the local model equals script dot parent. We'll type local left door equals model dot left door. Same for the right door equals model dot right door. And then we need the prompt as well. So we'll type local prompt equals model dot top dot attachment dot proximity prompt. Now we're going to connect to the triggered event of the proximity prompt. I have a full video on proximity prompt. I won't be covering all the details, but there is a triggered event for proximity prompt that will fire whenever we trigger the proximity prompt. So that would be, you know, pressing E near it or clicking it. So whenever it's activated, and then this function right here will be called. So, you know, whatever, whenever we're right next to the doors, it says like E to open. Uh, whenever you hit E, this function is called. Or if you're on mobile or something, you click it or tap it, then this function is called. So again, if you want the full video on proximity prompts, be sure to check that out. But for now, just know that this triggered event is fired whenever we do that. And this is where we'd write the code to open the door but we need to create the tweens first. So we're gonna do that. And to start off, I'm gonna create two different tables. Um, actually, I'm gonna create the tween info first. So you need tween info, which kind of tells you the properties of the tween, like how it's going to look, sort of, or how it's going to behave. So this tween will take one second to happen. You can change this however you like. There's some other properties that you can change, like the, the style, like maybe it starts moving quicker and then slows down. Uh, you can change that, but for now, I'm just going to have it set to one second. Then I'm gonna create two tables. I'm going to create a left goal open equals and then the curly braces, and then the next left goal, left goal close equals curly braces. 
So these two tables are going to be set to what the door should look like when it's open versus closed. So if we look at this model, for example, I'll select the left door. This is where the door should be when it's closed, right? It should have this current C frame. Okay, so remember that when the left door is open or closed rather, this is closed, right? The C frame should be its current C frame. When we open it, we want the C frame to go from here to here. All right, so it's going to move the full door size over, full door size over. And then the opposite is going to happen for the right door. So based on that information, what I just said, we're going to set the C frame for the left, oh, let's see, left goal open dot C frame equals left door dot C frame. So the current C frame when it's open, but we need to adjust it or offset it by the size of the door itself. So left door dot size dot x comma zero comma zero. Because you want to move it in the x direction, the full size over. So that would be when it's open, we're going to adjust it by this offset, the size of the door. Um, I don't have time to go into all the details of C frames in this video, but I will be making a video on C frames soon. There's just a lot to cover with uh, all the different, you know, matrix multiplication. Um, but then luckily, the close is a lot simpler. For the left goal close, when it looks like, or what it looks like when it's closed, that C frame, so if you can guess it, it is just the current C frame, right? Because we just want it to go back to where it currently is when this script first executes. When the script executes, the door's gonna be right here, right? So you start the game up, the door's right here, the current C frame right here will be its current position. So that's the closed position. So now we have the open position that we want it to be like. Uh, we want it to open to this position. We want it to close to this position. Now you could also add other properties such as the transparency. And, uh, you could change that if you want, but I'm gonna leave it as this for now. Now we need to create the tweens themselves. So to do that, I'll type local left tween open equals tween service colon create. And this create function will take the object that we want to tween. So we're, we're going to be working on the left door first. So to put left door, then the tween info. And then after that, the properties that we want to tween and we'll be tweening the left goal open properties, right? After this, we're going to just copy and paste it. I'll change left tween open to left tween close. And then I'll change the left goal close or left goal open right here to left goal close. Now at this point, I do wanna test this just to make sure it's working and just to make sure you're on the same page as me. So I'm gonna copy and paste the left tween open right here. I'm gonna paste it here. I'll do a colon play and let's run the game and see if this is working. As you can see, I'll run over this, I'll hit E and this door does open. I don't have it do anything else yet though because uh, I haven't set it up properly. So it does open though, hopefully yours looks like that. If it doesn't, you might wanna rewind the video and see what you've changed. All right, so now let's go ahead and create the right door animation. So I'm gonna copy all of this, this whole chunk. I'll go down and I'll paste it here and I'll do a lot of changing of left to right. The best way to make all these changes would actually be to put your cursor right here, right at this local on line 18 and then go up to the replace right here on the script menu, hit replace, and then just delete whatever text you have here. Instead of find, or at the find bar, we'll type left, go down to replace and type right, and then I'll just uh, make sure, you know, you see this is in blue, so that's where the cursor is, that's where we're gonna replace. Go to the right, and hit enter, 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 and go ahead and replace all those lefts with right. All right, once you have that done, we're basically done with this, but remember that the, the right door is on the opposite side and we don't want it to move in the same direction. So right here on the C frame, I'm actually going to put a negative sign right here in front of the right door size.x. So make sure you have a negative sign right there. And with that, we should be able to go ahead and write the logic just to make sure that this is working at this point though. Copy it right tween open and I'll go ahead and play this as well when we try to activate the proximity prompt. I'll go over to the door and at this point you should see both doors open properly if you've gotten to this point correctly. All right, so now back in the script, we're going to write the logic for opening and closing this, this door. Go to the proximity prompt itself, 
go to action text and change the action text to open, right? Because right now the doors are closed. So you want to prompt the user to open them. So the default starting text should be open. And then we're gonna come back here and the proximity prompt, the triggered event function that we have right here and to write the logic out. If the prompt dot action text is equal to close, then if it's prompting the user to close the door, we're going to want to play the closing animations if it's triggered. So we'll type left tween close play and then we'll type left tween or right instead of that actually we'll type right tween close play so this could be kind of easy to mess up when it's prompting the user to close the door you're going to want to play the closing tweens here after you play them you're also going to want to change the text the action text to open so we'll do prompt that action text equals open then if it's not close, we'll type else. So in the case that it's prompting the user to open the door, we'll just move these up and we're gonna play the opening animation. And then we're gonna also change the text to close. So change this to close. Now I actually just ran the game and realized that I made a mistake earlier in the script. So you'll notice that I have left goal open, left goal open again right goal open, right goal open. To actually make this work, we need to change the second left goal open for the tweening to close to left goal close. And then of course the right goal close right here. Now, if we run the game, you'll see I run over to this, do open, close, and it's functioning properly. Now you will notice that for this other model, I do have two pieces in the middle. And if you wanna do something like that, that moves with each door, all you need to do is just put some thin piece two thin pieces in the middle and have them unanchored and welded to each door. So just a quick example of how that would work. I have this unanchored part and if I just weld it, I'll hit the, in the, in the model tab, I'll go to weld and then I'll weld it to this left door. I'll move this up as well. So control two, move it up in the air and then play the game. You'll see this piece is just floating. If I go to open the door, that piece moves. So it's the same concept, but you can just put it inside of the middle and you can either make the door smaller, you know, bring it in, bring this left door in from here to there and then put a piece there. Or you could also just put it inside of it. But if you do that, you'd wanna make the metal piece a little bit bigger so it doesn't have any Z clipping. If you are interested in this model, it will be linked in the description. If you have any issues, feel free to let me know in the comments, like the video if it helped you out and be sure to subscribe for more in the future.